would be fun to review some of my favorite books that I read this year and just kind of chit chat with you guys about them. So let's get right into it. My first book I want to talk about is Victor E. Frankel's Man's Search for Meaning. This book is one that I've wanted to read since forever. You know, it's quite a famous book. I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of this book before. If you haven't read it, I do highly recommend it. It was one of my favorites this year. Just a little description on what it is. So the psychiatrist, Victor E. Frankel, he recounts his own stories and stories of his patients during World War II concentration camps. And it's really interesting, his take on human suffering. Essentially, he, I don't wanna, you know, retell the story wrong, but talks about that human suffering is something that we can't really avoid. Obviously, there's different extremes to human suffering. And he talks a lot about finding meaning beyond human suffering and that we are all on earth looking for our own meaning and our own purpose. So it's a really interesting take. It definitely puts life into perspective. It makes you really question not only what would you do in these circumstances, because I think it's hard to tell how you would cope in these circumstances without ever being in them, but also just kind of reflecting on your own life and finding meaning and purpose in your own life as well. Now, a more... <laughs> lighthearted, enjoyable read that I read this year is The 4-Hour Workweek. Now this is a book by Tim Ferriss that I've been meaning to read forever. I said that about the last book, but really this book, it's been forever. And the reason I wanted to read this book was actually Mimi and Alex Icon, the founders of uh, Intelligence Change and Lexi Hare. They actually, they're the ones who created the five minute journal, which is on my side that I use all the time. They had recommended this book, I think on their podcast or years ago, and I kept meaning to read it. So this year, I feel like it came at the perfect time. You know, I started my own business, talks very much about, you know, escaping the nine to five, living anywhere, how to build a, I guess, more luxurious lifestyle of more freedom and the steps that Tim Ferriss took to do so. Now, some of them are pretty extreme. Like I remember one of them was like, he wouldn't answer, or he wouldn't check his emails. It wasn't just once a week. It was more like once a month he'd check his emails or something like that. But I think you can take a lot of advice even if you are working nine to five on setting boundaries for when you check emails so it doesn't, you know, interrupt your flow state of work and helps you be more productive. So there's a lot of tips in here that you can take away from it even if you're not planning to leave your nine to five, just ways to you know be more productive and more efficient as well. So really enjoyed this book. So next we have the 48 Laws of Power, which I have heard about more and more this year I found. I don't know if it's TikTok that made it more popular again, or just people on social media online, but I have heard a lot about this book. And again, this was one that I had been meaning to read for quite a while. It's by Robert Greene. What I loved about this book is it really kept me interested the whole way through because it also mentions a lot of different tales from history and different time periods that either, you know, support the law of power or show the opposite of it. Overall though, this is a book that is interesting, but I hope not a lot of people will be applying this to their own lives as it's very much laws of power with no regard to morals or you know, your own values coming into play. So I hope not a lot of people are using these laws of power in their own lives, but it is interesting to think maybe this is, you know, informative in if you see other people who are kind of trading in on their values for power and how some of these tales in here can kind of reflect that. And I mean, there's lots to learn from here as well. Overall, really enjoyed this book. It kept me captivated all the way through. So I uh, highly recommend this one. Okay, so next one, we have a YouTube related book. It's called The YouTube Formula. I believe I read this, maybe it was the end of last year towards the beginning of this year. All kind of blends together in my mind, to be honest, but I really enjoyed this book. And I feel like this is a book that even if you are not someone who wants to grow on YouTube, you can actually learn a lot of like marketing advice in here as well. If you're someone who's really interested in marketing, there's just a lot of interesting tales in here as well. And just things that I had no idea about on YouTube. You know, it references Mr. Beast a lot. Um, it talks about different marketing tactics from different companies and how they promote content online. And overall, you know, I haven't read this one for a while, but I think it's the type of book that you want to reread to gain that knowledge again and test it out. There are little exercises throughout here as well that I still want to try. Yeah, you know, especially if you're on YouTube, I really recommend this book. I thought it was great. Next, we have the 5am club, which I have mentioned on this channel before. I actually reread it at the beginning of the year. I think it is one of those books that you can just reread. I really like this book because it's a bit different than the usual self-help productivity life advice book and the way that it gives you that advice through a very whimsical, fun, 
tale that you can follow along with. And I think the reason I like that is because sometimes when you're reading books that are a little bit more like structured, it feels a bit more like a lesson or a breakdown of a topic, you can lose interest quicker. Whereas this one feels like a very short and quick read because it's told through a story, it has lots of interesting quotes from people around the world, and the advice in it is advice that I think is worth rereading throughout the year and just feeling inspired once again. So if you're looking for a book like that this year, it's one that I recommend. I might reread it actually at the beginning of 2024. Like I said, it's a short read and it's one that I think is worth reading. My sixth book, I don't actually have a hard copy of it. I really should get a hard copy. And that is James Clear's Atomic Habits, another famous book. One that I think when I gave it a review at the beginning of the year, I gave it like a 3.5. I might revise that to a four just because I think it is a book worth reading and again, like rereading it maybe once a year. I think I was a little tough on my review on it at the beginning of the year only because I've read a lot of books from that genre and a lot of the advice is similar but I think the advice is similar because it's advice that works so <laughs> that would make sense uh, but it's a book that I think is worth rereading you know if you're someone who's looking to build better habits this year break bad habits and my favorite part is really talking about creating systems that help you improve good habits or, or continue on building them then I think this is a book that is worth reading in 2024 or don't have a hard copy, but yes, Atomic Habits is one that I, I still recommend. My next book is Girls That Invest. I really enjoyed this book this year. When I first read it, you can see I even saved pages in here. When I first opened the first couple of pages, there was some really shocking facts that just grabbed my attention right away. One that I was not aware of was that women in the US, I believe, they weren't able to open their own bank accounts until 1970. 1970, that was when my parents were born. Like I was, I was quite shocked and it just shows that we've come a long way but we still have a long way to go when it comes to creating more equality in this world. It's a little heartbreaking to hear that but also hopeful at the same time to think we're here now and I can open my own bank account. Shocking. But overall this book I think is really great for anyone who's new to investing like myself. Someone who's dabbled in it but perhaps didn't really know the terminology or understand it in a lot of depth. It's a very easy intro into investing. It, it's described as your step-by-step -step guide to financial independence from the creator of the number one investing education podcast, Girls That Invest. So you can also check out the podcast for more info. I, I really intend to do that as well, but I really recommend this book. I, I thought it was fantastic and a really nice intro into investing. We're making it to the bottom of my book pile. So next I have Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. This was a book that has been on my must read list since forever. I took my time going through it though because the format was different than I expected. I don't know why I expected the format to be different. You know, I knew that it was based on like his journal, but at the same time I was like, oh, these are like very small bite-sized chunks of information instead of like all woven together. So I mean, I enjoy just going through it piece by piece. So I recommend that to anyone else. So as described, written in Greek by the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, Meditations offers a wide range of spiritual ref reflections and exercises developed as the leader struggled to understand himself and make sense of the universe. And if you're someone who is interested in history or even Stoicism, then I mean, you've probably already read this book, but if you haven't, this is definitely the book for you. Okay, my last book on my list is The Mountain Is You. So this book was recommended to me by a friend, but also by many people online. So I really went into this book with high hopes and I wanted to love it. I was a little disappointed with this book, I'm not going to lie. You know, I was trying to love this book, but I felt that ultimately it fell quite flat. It had a lot of words, but didn't say a lot. There wasn't a lot of substance. You know, the writing style is also very, very simple. So I found it hard to get through, like it didn't really interest me. And it was extremely repetitive, you know, like I think the book could have been less than half the size of what it was letting you know. And I'm someone who, like, there's a lot of quotes and things thrown around this book. I like to see things being backed up <laughs> and going in, I guess, more depth. But at the same time, you know, I gave it a three star because I think, you know, it's gotten high reviews online um, for sure. And I think my friend, she really enjoyed it. I liked actually talking to her about it because she could relate to so many elements of the book and kind of pull from her own experience to make reading this book more enjoyable. So I think it's really one of those books that either speaks to you or is a bit of a miss. Unfortunately for me, it was definitely a miss, but I don't want to disregard that it may help someone else. So I'm not going to like not recommend it. I'm just gonna let you know that personally it wasn't for me. So those were some of my favorite books this year. Uh, not all of them, but honestly close. I think I probably read 
maybe five or six more than these ones. I wanted to reach a reading goal of 50 books this year and sadly did not. I mentioned that in my previous video where I talked about my vision board and goals from last year. But overall, these books, you know, I feel like <laughs> they're a diverse bunch where I got different information from each one. And actually talking about these books right now, I feel very motivated to get started on my 2024 bus read list. And I'd love to, you know, perhaps do a re review next year as well. Let me know in the comments too if you guys have read any of these books, if you have different takes on some of the books that I mentioned. I would love to start a conversation on that. And um, with that, I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!